Welcome everyone to this evening's webinar. I'm Derek Duncan, Area Executive for East Asia and the Pacific for Global Ministries. And I'm so glad that you could join us to learn more about the Asian Rural Institute, or ARI as we call it. ARI is a rural leaders training program affiliated with the United Church of Christ in Japan and is based in Tochigi Prefecture in northern Japan, north of Tokyo. I am very fond of ARI. Not only is it a successful program, one that has grown and thrived over the years, but ARI has a wonderful mission, combining leadership development that impacts communities all around the world with a commitment to sustainability that is authentic and lived out. As a community grounded in shared values, ARI is a place where faith and practice meet and where everyone who serves and volunteers has a hands-on experience in helping build part of God's beloved community in Northern Japan. Like almost all of our partners around the world, ARI was impacted dramatically by the COVID pandemic. As a result of travel restrictions into Japan, they weren't able to host their usual cohort of program participants for two years. But we're very excited that they've just now been able to start receiving participants for this year's program. As a matter of fact, we had been looking at possibly having this webinar with its focus on sustainability last month during Lent or near Earth Day. But the timing wasn't working out because they were busy preparing for participants to arrive. And we're very glad that that is the case. And we're very glad to now be able to showcase ARI at this time. In this webinar, we'll have the opportunity to hear a bit about the history and mission of ARI and to hear from various staff and graduate participants of the program. There will be opportunities to ask questions along the way, and we will talk later on about ways you may be able to support or even volunteer at ARI. To begin with, I'd like to introduce a very important staff person at ARI, Kathy Frode. Kathy is from the US originally, but has been on staff at ARI for many years and serves as head of the Ecumenical Relations Office. So she's the main point person for international partners like Global Ministries. Kathy will introduce other participants in the program and will lead our way through the webinar. Kathy. Thank you so much, Derek. And thank you to all of UCC. We very much appreciate your joining us today and we appreciate your support of ARI through the years. It's wonderful to be able to connect with you via Zoom since we have not been able to visit anyone um, from UCC, nor have any of you been able to visit us the last couple of years. So as Derek said, Earth Day recently passed and we are in the spring season now. This means renewal, growth, planting, and our thoughts turn to sustainability and the environment. And taking care of the earth has been something that ARI has done for more than 50 years, beginning in the 1960s in outside of Tokyo. But I mentioned 50 years and we are right now getting ready to celebrate our 50th anniversary next year. And so we continue this theme of sustainability and the environment, as you will hear later on. We have two staff members speaking today, Tomoko Arakara, our director who has been to ARI or been with ARI for more than 20 years, and also Jonathan McCurley, a reverend with the United Methodist Church and ARI's chaplain. We also have two graduates, Hiroka from Japan and Marta from Indonesia, who will tell you about their experiences. We'll give you an update about Fukushima. And lastly, we'll talk about how you can keep in touch with ARI. So first of all, may I introduce Jonathan McCurley. He has headed the community life section for many years, working with all of our community members and then the com local community to bring a positive influence throughout ARI and the local community. So Jonathan, please talk, tell us about yourself and ARI. 
Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be with you. Um, we also see some of our former volunteers um, who have joined us on this webinar. So thank you for coming, all of you. Um, yeah, again, my name is Jonathan McCurley. I originally come from Florida, and I'm with the United Methodist Church. Um, and I have been at ARI, it will be 13 years this July, which is kind of unbelievable. But um, it's very good to be here and to have seen ARI through many um, many things, uh, including Fukushima and, of course, now Corona. I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of who we've been, um, I guess, kind of looking at the history of ARI. So as Kathy mentioned, um, ARI actually started at the Tsurikawa Rural um, Theological Seminary, um, which is um, a seminary continuing today in, outside of Tokyo in Machida. Uh, and we began there as a Southeast Asian um, rural Christian leadership training program. Uh, and we were there for about a decade. And um, during that time, Dr. Toshihiro Takami, um, who at that time was not yet a doctor, but was a reverend, um, he was asked to lead the program. Um, and so he did that in 1971. There was a cyclone that hit uh, Bangladesh. At that time, I believe it was known as um, West Pakistan, or East Pakistan, I believe, which one? Yeah, West Pakistan. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, at that time, he took a, a group of 50 young adults from Japan um, and spent six months uh, working for development and, and um, through the connections they had with Bangladesh. And soon he says that God gave him a new vision, um, a new vision for what ARI could be. And eventually, uh, a couple years later, we began our training program, not in Machida, but here where we currently are in Tochigi. And that's began for 50 years. And it's interesting that Dr. Takami, Reverend Dr. Takami is the one who uh, really took this vision and went forward with it because of his life. If you've met Dr. Takami, and I know he was um, ordained with the UCC and he served with the UCC, uh, went to Yale Divinity, went to Doan College. Um, he... Um, as a, a man, uh, just an amazing man who is, uh, who, who was, he did pass away in uh, 2018, but he uh, was a man with, with just um, charisma that would attract you immediately to him. And this comes from his life. He grew up, he was born in Manchuria, which was, is part of, is China. At that time it was occupied by Japan. Um, later coming back, um, very impoverished during the war. Um, he was a very bright young man, so he ended up getting a scholarship to study, which at that time was not uh, promised to everyone. And so he studied in a Zen monastery, um, learned the ways of Shintoism, um, and of course, later Buddhism and these things. And, um, you know, a very bright young man. After the war, uh, he found his way to a Christian uh, college named Kobe Jogakuin, Kobe Women's College, as the chef. Um, and there's an interesting story of how he got there, but as a chef for a missionary that was there. And um, this led to him becoming baptized, uh, getting a full scholarship to the United States, becoming not only a Christian, but a pastor, uh, later returning to Japan. And when God gave him this vision, he spoke from his heart. Uh, ARI was within a seminary and it did a wonderful program there, um, but he felt like it could be more. He felt like pastors have a very good um, ability and a reason to work in the community, but there are other people that would willing would be willing to join hands uh, with these pastors. And that uh, he even wanted to open it up. He said when he went to Bangladesh that he was shocked that these mainly Muslim, but you know, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, Christian families, they would welcome them into their house when they didn't have anything to share it from his point of view. He and his friends from Japan were well taken care of and they would share from the very little they had. And it, it opened up his heart. Um, to, to what God was saying and that we need to work together. There are issues in the world that it doesn't matter what your faith is. It doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. There is something we can do together. And so with that vision, um, he brought uh, to life with his coworkers, the Asian Rural Institute, really starting from nothing. And so many people throughout these 50 years have, have grabbed onto this vision. And so from the beginning, this, this reconciliation um, over uh, what happened in World War II, over what's going on in the world, and then this idea of sustainability, of creating a life that really doesn't um, just depend on taking from the earth, depend on consumerism, but really on how to give back and how to serve the earth, one another, and God. Um, and that brings us to today, 
um, that has been continued to be our guiding principles. Um, and so we're going to get into one of those main themes, I think, later, but food life. This idea that life and food are really intricately uh, connected. And this is with God, this is with creation, and this is with one another. Um, so I'm going to end here. Otherwise, I'll talk all day and hand it back over to Kathy. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, it's wonderful to hear about the history of ARI and the vision that Takami Sensei had um, more than 50 years ago. Our next speaker is our director, Tomoko Arakawa. And as I mentioned, Tomoko has been with ARI for more than 20 years, 27 I found out today. And so she has held several different positions from curriculum coordinator to general manager to director. And so with 27 years, we sometimes think that she should be an honorary graduate. So Tomoko, please tell us about the Rural Leaders Training Program. Hi, good morning and good evening. I'm Tomoko, and then I'd like to talk about the, the, our training program and then what ARI is doing right now. And I'd like to share my screen. Can you share? Can you see it? So um, already Jonathan explained that uh, briefly about history and then the foundation. Um, so once again, our location is about 150 miles north of Tokyo in Tochigi Prefecture. And then uh, here is um, Utsunomiya capital city and then uh, Nasushiobara, we are here at Nasushiobara. And actually the, the north of Nasushiobara is a Fukushima. So that's why I'm, I want to talk about the Fukushima uh, disaster uh, later a little bit. But this is how where we locate and then um, we, our training program, we try to nurture rural leaders. We focus on rural leaders from Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Pacific, so that they can act on important leadership roles, building resilience and sustainability for the community and the planet. So uh, our focus is grassroots community leaders, rural leaders who serve the marginalized community. And then they are, uh, sent and recommended by the dedicated local organization. So we train at the, the local community leaders, but at the same time, we try to strengthen the, the, the local organizations as well. So this is how we, um, our characteristics, we, our training program is a nine months starting April to December. And as Kathy said that uh, after, and Derek said, after two years, we are now welcoming our participants and we are so excited and then last night, actually, two uh, arrived. And then today, five more are arriving from different countries. And then right now, we are more than 20, 20 are here. So it's really amazing. So ARI is now back. And then uh, usually, we have about 30, 25 to 30 participants from average 15 to 20 different countries. And then uh, we live and then learn in the diverse community. Our community is very small, but a very diverse. Um, and then uh, we speak English as a common media. Um, not everybody speaks fluently. Like this year also two ladies from Guatemala, they actually do not speak very good English. <laughs> Um, but we, we try to understand each other. We respect our culture and traditions and then what we have. Uh, this is how our training program works. As I said, that they are selected in the home country that by the sending, we call sending body, they are organizations who work the marginalized community, communities. And then they are such as NGO churches and agriculture organizations, women's groups, schools, and et cetera. Martha from Indonesia, she is a pastor in the, the local church uh, called Hakabepe in India, uh, in Indonesia, sorry. It features the, the largest Christian churches, right, in, the, in the Indonesia. So she's one of the example of such uh, selected participants. And then they come and then train, have a training in Japan. And then after nine months, they go back home and then go back to their sending bodies and transform whatever they learn in ARI and in Japan. And uh, this is our campus. So uh, the area, including the forest, forest is not drawn in this map, about six hectares of land we have. 
And then uh, east side of the campus, half of the campus is agricultural zone. So we have chickens and pigs and then the goats. And we have lots of agricultural fields that we practice organic farming. And then the west side is a more residential areas and classrooms. We have a uh, chapel uh, and then a dining hall and the multi-purpose uh, things that can be done in this hall. And then we have two dormitories, women's dorm and the men's dormitories. So it's on the hillside and then uh, we have everything here in this campus. So what they learn, uh, they learn that the Saban leadership, this is a three pillars we call Saban leadership, sustainable agriculture, and then the community building. And then uh, these are um, in, embedded in that the, our daily life and in the curriculums very nicely. And then that uh, they are practicing the Saban leadership and the sustainable agriculture community building throughout the, the daily activities and then uh, throughout the curriculums every day, nine months. And then these are, are based on the, the strong philosophical base and then uh, overlapping that the three pillars that we have a Saban leadership and the food life and the community of learning as our core values. And we have more smaller values surrounding these uh, three uh, basic core values. And at the center, uh, Jonathan said that we have a motto that we, we, that we may lead together. This uh, is a strong motive for our activities. Whenever we have some conflicts, whenever we have problems, uh, we try to remember that we are here so that we may live together with neighbors and the natures and in God. And then some of the characteristics of our training program, as I said, we produce our food by organic farming and we maintain high food self-sufficiency rate. And then uh, community life, living and learning in a community and diverse community. Is these, these two are the strongest characteristics of ARI. And then uh, learning by doing, we try to learn everything from our practices. So a lot of uh, very practical learning like uh, biogas plant making, the left pictures, and then uh, sausage and ham making, for example, a lot of food processing activities too. And the leadership practice in the school events and daily activities. And then now we have about one third of the training program devoted to the observation trip outside ARI. So we, this picture, the, the participant visit Hiroshima uh, Peace Museum. So yeah, so these are the, uh, some of the characteristics. We have um, over almost 1,400 graduates in the 61 countries all over the world. So maybe time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tomoko-san. Um, a wonderful overview of ARI. And we'd like to open it up for questions. If anyone has questions, we can put them in the chat. Or Becca, how else does someone ask a question? There's also the, the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen, uh, and that will be open the whole time. So as questions arise, go ahead and put them in the chat or in the Q&A box. Yeah, I don't okay. see any in the Q&A right now. Um, I wanted to say thank you very much for that, that uh, overview. And um, um, are you expecting that? Um, you say you have about 20, 25 participants. Uh, will they keep coming come, coming in? Um, are, are you expecting more this year? Yes, yes, we are expecting more. Um, altogether, if everybody are able to um, get in uh, over 33 this year, yeah. So we have already six were here um, from Japan and then two were uh, already in Japan, so six already have, and then we are adding more and more. Right. If we include our GIs, it's 36, including all That's the children. That's right, yeah, graduate in town, Japanese graduates in town. Right. Three more, yeah. There's a question how the students pay for their training and, and how much it costs. Mm, maybe it's a good question for Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking that. Um, we select our participants based on their work and their passion for their community. So we don't select them on the ability to pay. And we 
search for scholarships for participants. And it could be from someone maybe involved with UCC, maybe they belong to a UCC church in one of the African countries. And with that partnership, UCC um, may have a scholarship program or capacity building program. And so we'll search for that because some of our participants come from churches. Um, we we'll also look to foundations and other avenues um, where we can get support for scholarship. So we want the best people and the people who are the most marginalized so they really may not have the ability to pay. So we um, look for scholarships. Oh, the next question was how much does it cost? Hmm. And it costs about $18,000 a year. And that will include all of their um, room and board. It includes all of the lecture fees because we have both staff and outside lectures. It also includes several study trips throughout the year so they can learn from other um, farmers and social service organizations. So that is um, the basic cost of ARI. There's a, another question from Douglas Smith. That last one was from Melva Victorino and welcome Melva um, and welcome Doug. Uh, he is asking, tell us more about the partner organizations worldwide. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some of them, them, them being church partners or other service partners or other types of organizations. Maybe yes, Jonathan? Please. Oh yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, I think uh, there was the question there, uh, the, what other organizations in the balance? Um, I think usually ARI and Kathy can add to this, works with some type of community-based organization. So it can be either a church partner, it can be maybe an MPO, an NGO, it could be a CBO, it could be, you know, there's all kinds of names. Sometimes we even work with government organizations like the 4-H club, um, which is active in, in local communities. So really, it doesn't really matter exactly which type of organization. It has more to do with how much are they really working in the community and how connected are they with the people. I would say the balance, um, we actually, I remember, I think it was a couple of years ago, they, they gave like by decade. Um, what it had been. I think early on, we were almost 100% churches. And that has changed over the years. Um, in the early 2000s, it was more 50-50, maybe church-based versus others. And I think now it's getting even more diverse. Um, it's probably still a good third, I'm guessing, churches, but it's um, a lot more NGOs and MPOs have popped up since ARI began. And so I think ARI has really tried to work with as many different partners as possible. Um, Kathy, if you want to add anything to that. No. Yeah, we... Uh there are probably two kinds that, uh, of organizations. One is a, a um, supporting organization, financially supporting organization. And then also those organizations uh, to aim at to have um, educational programs at ARI. So we work with a lot of uh, universities and in high schools, especially a lot of mission schools in Japan. Um, many schools uh, bring that to students and they have a program in here. Well, the next question looks like it's for you, Jonathan. How do we integrate various faith traditions of participants and, current, and encourage interfaith discussions? You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I have to unmute. Huh? One of our main ways of, uh, I think, integrating that is our, our, our chapel hour, which we call morning gathering. And it's uh, uh, traditionally was a chapel hour, but it's kind of evolved from that to uh, we want every person in the community to take leadership of nurturing the spiritual growth of, of the community. And so we give every person, no matter their faith tradition, um, no matter their calling, as, as, whether it's as a, um, a religious leader or as a, a lay person or even as someone not involved with any type of religious organization. Uh, so we give people, uh, each person a chance 
to lead that. And that usually happens several times. I think when Hiroka was a participant, probably many times, I think Marta maybe just once or twice, just depends on the year and how many people are there. Um, that, that's the main way. And then outside of that, we have other spiritual life activities. Um, ARI really tries to, uh, although we are a Christian based organization, we really try to be a place where everyone can join anything. So whether it's a Bible study or a church service or whatever, we want everyone to feel like they can come. Um, and there are different things to where we do more discussion, um, like an interfaith gathering or uh, just times of um, praying together or whatever. The next question asks about Fukushima, and we'll be talking about Fukushima in another couple of minutes. So if I could wait on that question for a few minutes, please. And so next, we would like to play a song for you. It's called Take My Hand. And this is the ARI theme song that was written back in the 1980s by Christopher Grundy. He was a volunteer at ARI for some time and wrote this song for us. And we sing it often and it's very powerful. I can remember my first couple years, I would cry every time I sang it. So here is Take My Hand. Please enjoy.
Well, thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Well, next, we would like to introduce our um, graduates that are going to be speaking and telling you about their experience. First of all, we have our graduate intern, Hiroka, who a graduate intern is a second year Japanese graduate who wants to continue their studies at ARI for another year to focus on something that is most interesting to them before they go out into the world to start their career. So Hiroko, before she came to ARI, she graduated from university and um, was very interested in international development and so really felt that ARI was someplace that um, she could get experience to help her in that goal of hers. And let's hear from Hiroka about her transformation at ARI. Hi, hello everyone. So I'm Hiroka. So now I will talk about my experience as a participant in ARI and my current goals as a graduate intern. So since I was a university student, uh, I wanted to work in the field of international cooperation in the future. And in order to do that, uh, I knew that uh, I needed a speciality. So I decided to learn about uh, agriculture, especially organic farming and uh, development, uh, international development, rural development. And as you know, in ARI, we have uh, various differences such as nationality, uh, culture, uh, language, color of skin, and so on. So in such a multi-ethnic and multicultural environment, uh, I also would like to cultivate my communication skills to live together. So that's why I became a participant in ARI after graduating from a university. And after becoming a participant, uh, I ex experienced many things. So for example, uh, through servant leadership training, I learned to rely on others instead of doing things on my own. And we worked on farms, sweating together, we share food together, sometimes we cry together and laugh together. So I realized that uh, no matter how different our backgrounds are, we are all the same people, a human being. So finally, my idea for the future changed through ARI training. So ARI uh, reminded me of the importance of encounters with people. And, how, and now I want to cherish the people in my life as well. So as a graduate intern, I would like to get more involved with people and help them make precious memories and encounters at ARI. That's why I decided to be a graduate intern of this year. In addition, uh, I have another reason why I wanted to be a GI, uh, because I want to share with Japanese young people, especially the unique students, uh, that uh, there are many options in their future. So of course, you know, they're uh, going to university, they're job hunting and finding job are uh, not only the best solution in our life. However, there is still strong tendency in Japanese society to believe that uh, if you fail in any of these phases, uh, you cannot be a decent person. So I feel that that uh, this is uh, pushing the younger generation into the corner and uh, making them suffer. So I want younger generation to know that uh, even if you fail, still you have a time and uh, you have an option, many options in your future. 
And the Asian in Rural Institute, ARI, is one of the options which you can choose. So what do I want to do as a graduate intern of this year? So I set a goal. So my GI goal is sharing and making a place to make visitors feel at home. So I would like visitors to think that uh, they want to come back to ARI again someday. So I'm going to focus on the open learning programs, uh, which is activities for the public. So for example, uh, I get involved in study camp programs for university students or workshops or events like a used book market. So graduate intern is an interesting position, I think. Mm, I, like, I can share my experience uh, as a participant and to the students, I can talk casually like a friend because uh, I am the same generation as them. And I also would like to be like a bridge between visitors and the participants. So connecting them and uh, building the relationship where they can learn from each other together. So that could be one of the role as a graduate intern. So that's the end of my sharing. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Hiroka. We feel that Japanese uh, youth um, can benefit quite a lot from the ARI training and we invite several of them each year to join the training program. And so uh, Hiroka being here for her second year, we can see the, the development and her awareness of what is going on around her and around the world. And so next we have Marta, who is an overseas graduate from 2012. And this year, she's back again as a training assistant or TA. And Marta has been working in her community for 10 years. And our TAs have to be working for at least five years before they can come back for additional studies. And so Marta, please tell us about your experiences at ARI. Thank you, Kathy. Hello, my name is Reverend Margaret Marta Roydasianipa. Uh, my ARI name is Marta. I married and God give us five children, four daughters and one son. Uh, my husband and I serve at HKBP Church and we have small land around 2,000 meters. My husband leads six churches and I take care of church as a volunteer. In 2012, my sending buddy asked me to fill ARI application. Because he see the potential in me that can approach children, youth, and women. Not only that, she see my seriousness in farming and raising livestock like pigs and cactus. Nevertheless, I have to sacrifice my family, my children time. It is difficult decision for me to leave them. But my husband support me to go to ARI for learning. I came to ARI for my community. The community needs a pastor, a leader that can serve the community who is spiritually and physically healthy. After I go back to my community, so many things I want to serve. Many learning in leadership, in sustainable, using local resource, in community building. I do such as try to achieve my AI dream even though difficult. My ARI dream is to help my community get out of debt from middlemen. I talk about farming and so new ways to them. Changing people takes a long time. Opening a small restaurant to teach my community, don't hesitate to do small things because small things can affect others. In this restaurant, my husband and I working together. Through this way, we want to support other married couples to build a good relationship. Raising chickens by collecting rotten fruits and leftover juice from our local market. So how to sell chickens in food processing way? 
teach children in flowers arrangement for chapel or church by using flowers that are around. Open a small course for English, math for primary school at church. Not only for HKBP church, but also for all children. Encourage children at orphanage to build their confidence. God loves them. We are here for them. They have same rights as other children to reach their future and to be a good person. Teaching the children at the orphanage, sharing with others from what they get or what they do. The reason I come back to RRI as a training assistant, RRI is also like a family with big numbers of children. 1,368 graduates from 61 countries. White, brown, black, with their own language, with different background, with various problems, struggle faced in community, for different reasons come to ARI. But we have one vision, that is to be a servant leader in community. Uniting vision is difficult, after uniting, all you have to do is make it happen when you return to your respective countries carrying the same vision, ARI vision. Still have dreams. That's why I came again to ARI as a training assistant after 10 years. My dream is now a little changed because my first dream is for myself. Why? Because I want to be a servant leader. As God chose me to be a pastor, not just a leader, but a servant leader. This is important point often forgotten by people, especially when that person is in higher position. To achieve my dream as a servant leader, I come back to RI to save myself, save my character and discipline. Build a new perspective about servant leader in other ways lead yourself, serve others, encourage others, even though you have your own problem and struggle, you can help solve your problems. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marta. You were busy for the last 10 years and impacting many people. And Looks like we have a couple of questions, so please go ahead and put them in the chat if you have more. And our first question, Hiroka, you can read right now, so go ahead and please answer. Uh, how long has I am been speaking the language in the English? Né? Uh, actually, the, I, I learned English in ARI. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I came here, uh, you know, the Jonathan, I couldn't listen uh, his English, what he is talking. <laughs> his, his, his English very fast, you know, so. But uh, I, I, interesting, I was interesting in the uh, ARI people, so I tried to communicate with them uh, all the time. Then I used to getting ARI English. <laughs> yeah, I think that is the answer. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Are there any other questions? Well, you can ask questions later and also put them, continue to put them in the chat and we'll answer them a little later. But next we want to have Tomoko-san talk about the Fukushima challenge. And it's very much a part of the ARI story. And so Tomoko-san will tell you about that now. Okay. So I'd like to share the screen again. Um, because of COVID, many people, I think, are forgetting about that, uh, what happened in Fukushima, even in Japan. And then, but I, I'd like to give an update because still it affects uh, many people's life, especially uh, in Fukushima and the surrounding prefectures. As I said at the beginning, Tochigi Prefecture is the next prefecture of Fukushima. So this is a photo about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, in our campus ARI, and it happened in the March 11, 2011. 
and then the magnitude was 9.0, which is the, the record uh, biggest uh, earthquake in, in, in our history. And uh, as you know, that uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant exploded and the hydrogen explosion happened. And then uh, two kinds of cesium called cesium-134 and 137 uh, leaked and then uh, spread uh, many parts of uh, eastern part of Japan. And then this is the, right after the, the earthquake, the accident. And then right now, um, actually not much change because still radiation is too high and then no human can enter the plant. And then only the remote control robot can enter and then do some activities. But this activity has just started uh, only little cleaning and then the measuring the radiation and some taking photos and how much damage is actually happening. So only little has been done. And then much of the activity was going on to stop the leaking uh, to the sea and in the ground. And then uh, this is the, um, uh, the map of the, the surrounding area. And the blue portion is the uh, so-called difficult to return area. And then uh, people uh, cannot return to this area. And then uh, uh, the size of the area is a 2.4% of the total prefecture land. And then um, which is uh, 3,000, sorry, uh, 337 square kilometers are still uh, designated as a difficult to return area. Um, and then, uh, but the government clean up uh, except forest, most of the land, and then now encourage uh, people to go back to their uh, hometown, but uh, still 30, more than 36,000 people uh, cannot go home or they moved in different places. So they, they are counted as a set settlers, but um, many people lost their hometowns and then uh, I still cannot go home. Um, and then I just show that the location of ARI, ARI is 110 kilometers uh, southwest, which is about 70 miles uh, from the epicenter. And then the red and the yellow portion or yellow, uh, green portion is a high in the radiation, which is cesium 137, 134. And in the ARI area around here is lower than the Fukushima, but still a lot of um, amount is accumulated. So we started at the Becquerel Center, ARI Becquerel Center in 2012, January. And then with the volunteers, we measured that the food and the non-food items. And then uh, as of December uh, or as of today, more than 7,100 items were measured. And then um, after the 10th year of anniversary of the Becquerel Center, some volunteers retired because when they started, they already retired people. And now they are uh, 10 years older than that time. So they became older and then they retired. So some of the ARI staff members replaced them and then we are still continuing. Uh, just quick review of the results uh, of the measurement. So year 2021, uh, the number of items are uh, uh, over 300. And then uh, the total, uh, measurement in the all total measurement, uh, about at eight percent among all the food that were grown in, in the ARI field, eight percent were over the ARI standard. ARI standard is a very strict. The Japanese standard, the government standard, is a hundred becquerel per kg, but ARI is about one third of the the Japanese standard, government standards. So uh, with that standard, 8% were over the ARI standard. But last um, seven, eight years, actually, we haven't found any uh, of the ARI grown food that were over the ARI standard. So most of the, the contaminated food was found at the early stage, the first three, four years. But we are still continue to measure the, all the ARI grown food and then also the food and the non-food items that were brought by the local people. So um, still um, the fresh, the first harvest of the year we are measuring in the Becker Center. Two years ago, 2020, we compiled all the data and then uh, we made a booklet called the History of ARI Becker Center. And then um, we tried to cover that uh, the data and then uh, some um, 
also that the, how we will go, what we learned and how we will go from here. And uh, it, is, it was very challenged to uh, conclude uh, from these experiences because things are not finished. But finally, um, we concluded that the disaster has made us consider the way that we are living and then has led us to shift our focus to look for a better way forward. So um, we are determined to contribute to the two major areas uh, through the activities of ARI. And then one is contribution to security with a gamma ray measurement. So we are determined to continue to the measure uh, measurement uh, for the local community and then for ARI. And then secondly, uh, education for thyroid checks up and then advocacy for administration. Um, we say thyroid checks up because checkups because in Chernobyl, uh, in Belarus or Russia or, or um, Ukraine, cases of a uh, thyroid cancer were found after five years after the nuclear power plant accident. So uh, we try to carefully observe our cases in this area too, uh, because government has not has been checking the cases in Fukushima Prefecture, but not in this area. So we are cooperating with the consumer cooperative cooperatives in the Ibaragi prefecture, the neighboring prefectures, and then conducted the thyroid, thyroid checkups in ARI, uh, where the doctors, volunteer doctors, and then the people come and then organize the, the checkup sessions. So, so this is a quick review of the, the what's happening in Fukushima. So in ARI, we try to help. Uh, and then assist in, uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, measuring that uh, radioactive activity in our food and in non-food items. Thank you very much, Tomoko-san. It's so encouraging to hear that so many positive things have come out of this kind of disaster. And we had a question a little earlier about, um, let's see, Fukushima. And the question was, ARI continues to assist with Fukushima recovery. And is there anything to add to what you've said, Tomoko-san? Um, no, but the... Um... Operating, keep operating the Becker Center is, I think, at the big at the assistance that we can do at this moment. And in with that as Becker Center, people who are interested in uh, come and they learn, and then also we can educate the students and young people who come to ARI. Actually, the seminar house, our accommodation place where Kathy and then Hiroka Mata are now uh, staying right now is the place where Becker Center is located. So many people stay there and then can learn actually uh, the, how we measure that the radiation. So it's a education, education is the biggest part, I think. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions about this topic? Okay, well, that's, let's move on. We are so fortunate to have one, our um, volunteer from UCC join us today. Abby's a very busy um, gal nowadays. She started her new job recently after coming back from ARI. And she was with us for two years, leaving this past February. I can't believe you're gone, Abby. <laughs> we miss you so much. And one thing I wanted to tell you is um, Abby came, she wasn't a city girl, but she wasn't a country girl either. And, <laughs> and working on the farm was a little bit tough um, for her, but she persevered. She made so many friends. Um, she learned lots of farm work, but she also contributed to our office, to our admissions and recruitment section and um, worked with the staff member and just um, 
was such a vital part of the department that we miss you for that, but we also miss you for the community in which you um, were also another vital part and just a breath of fresh air and um, a friend to everyone. So, so good to see you again, Abby. Please tell us about um, your experience. Thanks, Kathy. It's so good to see everybody. I'm sorry I hopped on and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> uh, some of the biggest things that I, I think um, one of the biggest impacts in my life that ARI had on me is also one of the greatest challenges, which was learning to live in community. Um, I think that is such uh, a huge part of ARI um, and our training program. And <laughs> I still say our because I'm like, I'm still a part of it. Um, uh, because, you know, uh, coming from California where um, maybe people go to work and then they come home and they have like more of a smaller unit. Uh, it's a different feeling and it's a whole different experience than like living, working, eating, playing together all of the time. Um, and so it was a completely different culture, a completely different environment and being so far from home, um, that part was challenging, but it also taught me so much about myself and so much about um, what I wanted to do in life and how much uh, joy and inspiration and how life-changing community is um, and inspired me actually my time at AR inspired me to pursue the work that I'm in now um, uh, which is um, working with uh, an immigrant population um, and so I I my life is forever changed um, for the community aspect for all the wonderful people I met um, learning farm work, <laughs> um, learning, uh, I don't know, just what a joy it is to work hard and to work together. Um, ARI believes in connectedness, um, and it reflects that in everything that we do and everything that, that ARI is, um, how our livestock is connected to our food and how our food is connected to us and how we're connected to each other. And even in the office, like all of the work that we do in there, we're still part of that community, and that's that's what we what we gather around. Um, so yeah, maybe community and connectedness; those are the biggest impacts um, that have come into my life um, from my experience at ARA. Thank you so much for sharing, Abby, and wonderful to see you and. Um, Yes, ARI is very unique experience for all people involved. It's not only the participants who are transformed, but staff and volunteers um, learn every day from participants, but also from each other. So we really um, loved that you were at ARI and please send a friend to join us. <laughs> We'd love to have another UCC volunteer. And we have um, a couple questions about uh, for our graduates, but I want to go into, and we'll answer those at the end. This call was scheduled to end about 10.15, so we're going to continue on um, right now. Uh, so this section talks about engaging and how um, UCC can engage with ARI. And first of all, become a volunteer. Um, you may yourself want to come at some time, no matter what your age is, um, you're welcome at ARI. I know one of the people who's on the call right now is Joyce Ray and her husband, Bob. And they came to ARI for three months after they retired. And so they've been back a couple of times for a couple of months at a time. And we just had another volunteer who was at ARI for over a year, and she also is a retired person. So don't think you're too old. And then, of course, we have volunteers that come sometimes after high school, sometimes after college, and sometimes um, mid-career, because I came to ARI when I was 50, and that has turned into... Um, uh, working at ARI for many years now. So that is one way. 
Another way to connect is to join American Friends of ARI. It is a support organization with friends um, who have been to ARI and friends of friends who have not. And we publish a newsletter and have webinars each year. And sometimes we also need your help with editing or organizing or making phone calls for something that is going on at ARI. It could be editing a newsletter or the annual report. Maybe that would be something you're interested in. Or even working in graduate outreach section where you're looking at the stories of our graduates and um, helping put them on our website. We'd love to have you visit by yourself or with your church group or other group that you have. And we would also be happy to visit you at your church when we are again traveling within um, the United States. Uh, let's see. And so those are some other ways to connect. You can also contribute your hard earned funds to um, the church and designate it for ARI. So we, those are all of the ways to remain connected with ARI and hope to see you again. Please, we're going to put in um, the chat our uh, website addresses that you can check out. So please look at that. And I know Becca will be sending you a follow-up email with that information too. And so I'm going to open it up for questions now. And if you have questions for Tomoko about um, Fukushima or Abby, or I see that there are some questions for our graduates also. Oh, Mata, there's a question to Mata. Yes. Okay. M Melva said um, that it's, um, she can see that Marta's husband and family supported her dreams and ministry to be a trainer and to come to ARI. I want to affirm the families of the trainees and trainers to attain their goals. Thank you very much, Melva, um, for your heartwarming message there. Okay, Marta, there's one for you. And is there a graduate organization in Indonesia that you're involved with? Yeah, thank you, Josh. Uh, Both are muted yeah. now, so one has to be. Indonesia contains many, many islands. Uh, so it's difficult for Indonesian to establish an organization, ARI graduate. But for our local church, it's KBP, we have an organization for graduate, ARI graduate. Uh, such as um, at 2019, we uh, make a meeting and we invite the director of ARI, uh, Tomoko Arakawa Sensei, Katie Frode, and Stephen Kaving. They come to Parapa to attend the meeting. And the next uh, question is, uh, how does ARI help support graduate until they return home? For me, ARI very, very support because uh, after I graduate, I cannot imagine uh, that Stephen Kati and Beck Akma come to visit me, but not only me, some graduate they visit. This is a big support for us that we know that ARI always support graduate. That's the biggest thing for me. Uh, directly the staff come to visit us, sharing together uh, what our uh, struggling in the community after we come back to our uh, community. That's a big support for us when they come to see us and to see what we, ha we have done after ARI. Yeah, thank you.
As a part of the answer, how does ARI support graduates after they return home? We have a dedicated section called Graduate Outreach um, headed by Stephen Cutting. And he is a longtime staff member of ARI and is probably the one that has met the most graduates. He has traveled to many countries and did a um, study of ARI graduates and their impact on their communities and visited nine countries and met over 300 graduates. And so his section um, works with the graduates to get their stories. And we have a website that has all of their stories on it. He puts together training um, courses that we have taught at ARI and he puts them also on the website. There's also an exchange of information. If we teach how to make bokashi or other fertilizer, we ask the graduates, how do they make it in their country? Because our way might not be um, the way someone else can make it, but um, various African countries can share and various Asian countries can share their methods. And so um, Stephen is in contact with graduates all day, every day, um, either via email, but most often through social media to help answer questions and to give encouragement. And there are several graduate associations um, in various countries around the world, and he helps to support them with um, information. And we do have funds to help people have meetings also. So that's about it. Is there anything else? I just wanted to remark, uh, listening to the, the graduates, but also oh, Abby. This um, hmm? webinar has um, been wonderful. And thank you to both UCC and also to Disciples of Christ for allowing us to come and join you. The, uh, the work that you do to help support us is extremely valuable. We would not be able to bring our participants to ARI if it wasn't through the support of both DOC and UCC. So we appreciate all of you very much. I was going to remark that um, it's evident hearing the stories uh, from Hiroka and Marta and Abby and, and others that um, as a community of learning, it's not just what they learn directly from ARI, but they learn from each other and you all learn from them. Um, and that's, uh, that's really what, what our partnership is all about is that we learn from you um, uh, all sorts of things, and um, and this has been a wonderful opportunity to to learn this evening about uh, ARI. Um, I wanted to just make sure there were um, no lingering questions before we go to a wrap up. Um, let me check and just double check in the Q and A. Nope. So, Kathy, thank you very much. You've uh, enumerated several of the ways to support ARI, to support through uh, continued uh, contributions for uh, all the programs, which include uh, helping support participants in, in the, the training program um, through ways to volunteer, either and that can be done directly through ARI. It can be done through global ministries uh, through a variety of ways as a short or long term volunteer, either individually or with a group um, or as uh, Abby did as a global mission intern through the formal program that young adult young adults uh, participate in to work with partners for one or more years. Um, there there are uh, and, and we're so excited that the um, COVID situation has uh, relieved 
at least uh, for the time being, and and knock on wood, hopefully will will remain uh, so so that um, participants and volunteers can return to uh, be part of that community. So um, this has been a great program, a great opportunity to learn about ARI. And uh, we thank all of you. It's evident from your passion and your commitment that uh, that's one of the secrets that has allowed ARI to make such a tremendous impact around the world uh, in nurturing the earth and nurturing our global village. And with over 1,300 graduates around the world, uh, uh, it's, it's been um, a great success. And we're proud to partner with you and to have been able to be uh, uh, to accompany you for this 50, first 50 years of your um, program, and we look forward to celebrating the the 50th anniversary next year, and to accompany you for the next uh, half century of your ministry. I want to thank all the participants at this evening's webinar, whether you've been participating live, whether you've been uh, watching on Facebook, or whether you're going to watch this um, in, in recording. Uh, we thank you that you've taken the opportunity to learn about the Asian Rural Institute and uh, for the ways that, uh, that we know you will surely uh, support this important ministry. So once again, thank all of you participating. Uh, uh, Tomoko, Kathy, Hiroka, Marta, and Jonathan, and Abby. Uh, I appreciate the time that you've given us uh, today um, for uh, for this webinar. And once again, uh, we look forward to, uh, once again, in the future, visiting in person at ARI.